Uh, I want to continue tonight just for a little bit talking about healing. And just kind of knocking the devil in the head a little bit. Um, if you needed brain surgery, and I hope you never do, how many of y'all have a brain? Raise your hand if you got a brain. How many of you would like a bigger brain installed? Raise your hand. Uh, but if you ever needed brain surgery, uh, also I want to point out that good looking man over there in that seat all by himself. I always make, uh, I love that chair, I hate to embarrass you, but that is one single chair alone. And I always wondered why that was there. But now that is the most social distance <laughs> chair that you could have. Give it up for that guy sitting in that special chair. Uh, so if you need a brain surgery, how many of y'all do not, just because there's a good deal at the LASIK place and the guy has read a lot of things and he's seen YouTube tutorials, uh, how many of y'all think you don't want him doing brain surgery? Uh, and how many of y'all don't want an ophthalmologist doing it, a gynecologist doing it, an ear nose? How many of y'all want the best brain surgeon that you can get? Up a little bit, Marcus. So in, in the church world, you got John Hagee, great man of God, 80 some odd years old. I think he's like 80, you got somebody Google it if they want. I think he's like 85. And he's, his, he married a, he span, a, a Spanish girl when he was a young man and he loves to eat. And he weighs somewhere upwards in the mid threes and he's never missed a meal. He's loving his life and he can preach heaven now. And uh, he deals with uh, end time prophecy. And some people would call him a gloom and doom and like the rapture and the end of the world. But he's called to do that. Like a doctor, he specializes in that. And that reason why I said that about his health is we, we were all a little concerned because everybody had so much faith in COVID going to kill him. And, and he got COVID real bad. And we were like, man, if anybody ever had a lot of pre-existing conditions, it's Pastor Hagee. And he flew through it with flying colors and doing great. Give it up for Brother Hagee. And then you got, you know, people like Rod Parsley, again, preaching that, you know, God's coming back, split that eastern sky with that long, lanky, long Galilean leg, and he's going to throw it over that white stallion. You got that kind of guy. And then you got other people who preach on all different things. And there are certain people that have to, as a pastor, I preach on a lot of things. I've taught you about end time prophecy, teach you about a, a lot of different subjects, but I specialize in the area of faith and healing. That's why you just, that song kind of troubled me because of the education that I have. So God through the Holy Spirit speaks to you and the education that I have, have studied and what I'm an expert in is the area of faith and healing. So as an old, that's part of the reason why we also draw a decent amount. Actually, everybody's always surprised because we've got such a cool hip church. Why we would have a lot of older people at our church uh, it's because if you see old people at our church, they're really smart old people. So they knew, I want to go to that church because that joker did a lot of studying on faith and healing. And when he preaches on faith and healing, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So you don't, if you're, if you're going to get old, and I think you are, how many of y'all think you're going to get old? Then you want to be in a place that preaches that. Because faith begins where the will of God is known. There's a scripture in the Bible, and I want you to write this down. It said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his word hasn't changed. His promises have not changed. Jesus is the same. So if he said he would heal the man with the willed hand, he, he did, and he will. If you can ever prove where Jesus healed somebody else, he has to do it for you because he said he's not a respecter of persons. So if you find out there was a woman with an issue of blood, Raise your hand if your wife's got an issue. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> the woman with the issue of blood, God healed her. Peter's mother-in-law. You know Peter was a godly man. His mother-in-law was dying and he prayed <laughs> that she would get healed. Let's get it. So we got all kinds of stuff in the Bible. So I specialize in that area. I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death with a lot of people. When I look at Lena, standing there, sitting there. Yeah, standing there. Look at her old bay like that. Come here, Lena. <laughs> Lena sat under my dad's ministry. Both of you come up here. Both of you are prize members of this church. So Gloria McDaniels, that's who she is. And, and uh, Lena's been coming to the church for how long? 
You know, about 38 years, man. How 40, many years? About 38 years. Yeah, I'm 33, and you were right after me. You're 33 years, and she was right after you. You're right. So you got to respect her because you just got here. <laughs> okay? But they heard my dad preach a million sermons about faith and healing. So I'll not give away their age, but uh, they're not 19. <laughs> but when I said she's, there she sits there, or she's standing there. I mean, she sits there. She jumped up so quick just because that's the way you did it back in the day. You just respected, you honored, you jumped up. She didn't say, well, my knees are old. No, she tells her knees, hey, straighten up. I know what she believes. Well, why is she doing so good? Why does she look so good? It's the word. The word in you will make you look different. Bill, I'm proud of you. I love you, Lynn. Love your family. Love you, Gloria. My dad only had a couple African Americans in the church, and these were two or three of them in an all white neighborhood. And then we made them proud, built the biggest black church in St. Louis. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. Come on, no patty cake in here. Clap tonight. So, healing. Everybody shout healing. So, let's talk about this to make you help you get the education that you need. In Mark, the eighth chapter, verse 22, it says, when they arrived at Bethesda, some people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch the man and heal them. Begging. Healing. Jesus looked at the blind man, took him by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eye, he laid hands on him and asked him, can you see anything now? And the man looked around and said, yes. I mean, that's good. He said, I, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. Then they looked, they looked like trees walking around. So this is what I would call, if you're a note taker, partial manifestation. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again and his eyes were opened and his sight was completely restored and he could see everything clearly. And that's where we got the song. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. Not really, but this is my sermon. So we see it's God's will to heal. We saw these people coming in begging Jesus to heal. They heard that Jesus was healing. They heard that Jesus was a healer. So when they heard it, they found out where Jesus was at. They went to faith church. They said, I want to go to the church where they believe in healing. I want to go to the church that they're not saying, oh, God, help me with the vaccine. Help me with the vaccine. Can't wait till the vaccine gets here. Well, don't put your trust in vaccine. Take the vaccine if you want. But uh, somebody DM me today because I put the communion, by the way, here at Roll Palm, uh, there and here, we have communion always set out. It's setting out over there and you can take it when you come in. And then we have special nights where we have communion as a church family. And by the way, when we do that, don't ever miss that. Like if you're like, man, I was getting married that day. We just got to postpone it because you got to take the blood of Jesus. And so somebody saw that I posted that today on my Instagram and they said, that's my vaccine station. I like that. <laughs> the lady already got her vaccine. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right? It's the blood. I want to get a vaccine. I'd wait a minute. We don't know what they put all up in that vaccine. Now you might come to church going, can you pray for me? I took the vaccine. Somebody clip that put it on YouTube. Not making fun of people. Just telling you. Personally, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So you need to go to Psalms 91 and say, no plagues coming out of my dwell. I had COVID. Around thousands of people are spitting on me. Pray for me. I got COVID. Oh, I got COVID. And then I woke up one day and thought, my God, I got COVID. <laughs> but I got rid of it about as fast as I got it. I didn't like it, but now I've had it. So... They tell me I have the antibodies, that's good. But then now they said, well, maybe not. You better take the vaccine to make sure. 
I don't know who to believe. I do. Jesus is the same. Yesterday. Come on, somebody. Today. Lena's husband's in heaven, probably thinking, Lena, my God, woman, how much longer? Lamont's up there going, Lena, I always waited on you. 20 minutes, I'll be there in five minutes. How many of y'all married? You know, that your wife says, I'll be there in five minutes. How many of y'all know what that means? You got an hour, go wash the car. You're going to live a long time. So, he said, yes, I, I, I can't see him clearly, verse 24 one more time. He said, I can't see him clearly. I see him as trees, partial manifestation that Jesus placed his hand upon him again, and his eyes were open. Partial manifestation. So what is healing? Healing denotes a process of time. Miracle, Jesus, God does those severally as he wills, so there can just be a miracle. And we've seen, I've seen thousands of miracles in this ministry. In this very building, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of miracles. You've seen hundreds of miracles in this building. Literal, bona fide, documented miracles. But I, I can't do that. But what I can do is teach you the art of healing. Everybody shout healing. healing. So I, I want you to get a hold of this to where you understand that it's okay to have partial manifestations. Because if Jesus Christ himself laid hands on this dude and he just got partial manifestation, then Jesus laid hands on him again and he didn't lay hands on him again like, let me try that again. See if I can amp up my God powers right now. (laughs) No, there was a residue of anointing. The anointing breaks and destroys the yoke of the devil. And so that anointing starts increasing and increasing and the anointing of God started driving out blindness and it just was just like radiation. The first treatment doesn't get it. So people all the time, they go to a doctor and I'm all for doctors. I love doctors. Oh man, I love nurses. Let's give it up for nurses and doctors and all the people. My goodness. <laughs> you don't need them till you need them. But when you need them, you're like, I love you. You saved my life. Right? God calls them. Thank God for them. It's a noble thing. But you'll give a doctor, a physician, well, it's going to take me a couple of years to, to fight through this with you. Okay. I need you to come back. You need your treatment on this day, this day, and this day. So you go to the doctor, it's changed all, all your life. Can't go on vacation, can't go to the little league, can't do anything because you're like, oh man, the doctor told me yeah. Yeah. I need to be here on these certain days at this certain time. One guy is a friend of mine, his name's Leo. Leo's probably the most faithful volunteer we possibly could ever have at the Ferguson Forest Campus. Give it up for the Ferguson Forest Campus. Unbelievable campus. And Leo, Leo lived a hard life, a lot of sin. Let's just say Leo had a lot of fun with a lot of ladies for a lot of years. Came to Jesus, Leo did, and he still had that deep voice that, uh, yeah, white people ain't gonna know anything about this, but this very white talking love song voice. White people Google that. That black woman said, that's right. She's like, she like, I heard that. I heard I got the mixtape. For my children were born to that talking song. It's good. Barry. So Leo, he came here and he already had pre-existing conditions. But he heard about Faith Church believing in healing and all this different stuff, prosperity. God blessed him with a truck and company and became a great donor and so on. But his health was already having some struggles and his kidneys were already failing. And then Leo needed to go and get on dialysis. So Leo ha- had to and still has to go, I don't know, a couple times a week, the last time I talked to him, he, he goes in there and they hook him up to some kind of chair or something, machine, and he has to sit there for hours. I'm talking like hours. Anybody know how long somebody does that? Like this? Four hours? Thank you. Four hours. So four hours is a long time. You guys check out on me about 20 minutes into this still. 
I'm having to crack a joke. I can tell I lost you. I'm like, bring it back. So you like, look at your neighbor and say, he's better than dialysis. So look at him. So tonight, that's why we're doing a four-hour service tonight. Uh, Florida's like, my God. So he sits in the chair. But he's learned while sitting in the chair because he was trained right. God, I thank you that my kidneys are functioning normally and properly. I speak to every bone in my body, every organ in my body to function in line with the word of God. For I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God has knit me together and I'm the apple of God's eye. Not sitting here going, I got to sit here four hours a week. No, he's listening to podcasts, writing checks, running his business. Because he, he's, he's starting to see cl- clearer, starting to get better starting to improve. So if Jesus Christ himself laid hands on you and then you got partial manifestation, then certainly if Pastor Jordan lays hands on you, he's going to take you months to get healed. Come on, somebody other than you. Because you know he sells our gear on the black market. We all know that. But I'm not Jesus. Jordan isn't Jesus. You know, Pastor Joe on the front row Joe, stand up there in Florida and let's give everybody, everybody give Joe a hand. He's done a great job after Joe's in. Okay, so Joe can lay hands on you, but our faith isn't in Joe. Faith isn't in Jordan. Faith isn't in Joel. Faith isn't in Joyce. Faith isn't in Jake's. I found out a long time ago, if you had a J name, you're more successful in the preacher world. Come on, help me right now. So our faith should not be in, we should take the whatever it is, help from the doctor. But even if you take an Advil, take it in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that I got to take this Advil right now. But if, when I start feeling relief, I'm going to give you the glory because I'm going to be totally in alignment with my assignment and I'm healed and I'm whole and I am never, ever going to accept the devil's disease in my life. Come on, give it praise. Come on, come on, come on. I see Sheldon there in Florida, and I talked about him a little bit last week. I don't remember if I actually told who he was, as far as he was the one who was the student that was saying stuff like, how you doing? Well, I'm, come here, Jane. I want to, Jane, you and Scott come up here. Um, he said, well, I, you know, I'm not doing too good. Or, you know, I'm, you know, I'm. he was reporting what the facts were. I want you to write that down. Facts. It is factual that some people have cancer. It was factual one day when Scott called me and said, hey, pray for Jane. She's got a disease and it's not looking good and she's not doing well. And it was bad enough to where she was in the hospital. I still remember walking into that room with Nicole. And here's the deal how it works at Faith Church. If you see me at the hospital, because the church is so big, and there's so many of you. If you see me at the hospital, chances are it means they told me you're going to die. So if you see me, it's not good. <laughs> if you see all the other guys, it's like, oh, it's good. In fact, one lady at our church, I just really liked her. She kind of reminds me of Cynthia Mandela at church. And this woman, she's an older lady, and she lived in Illinois. And I just liked her. And I heard she was sick, and I knew she wanted me to come see her. And I just went to see her. And when I walked in, she wasn't that bad. She said, oh, my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> she almost had a heart attack. I said, no, no, I just, I like you. I just came. (laughs) But I walked in and I remember seeing her. She was just totally pale, a rack of bones, dying. And when I walked in, I didn't go, Scott, sorry, man. You never know what God's going to do. Jane, in front of her, she's listening. I don't know why God puts this on us, but I know it's for his glory. I, God, they're laughing because they know that this is so not right. It's like telling, you know, trying to convince you guys that I don't like Girl Scout cookies and ice cream. (laughs) So I went in there not praying the prayer of God, I don't know. God, we sure hope so. I came in there and said, hey, it's going to be all right. 
Jane, you're going to be okay. We're going to rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. You're going to live and not die. You're going to walk up out of this hospital, and God is going to heal you. And I'm going to lay my hands on your head, and God is going to touch you and heal you and make you whole. Not part. So now, she didn't just uh, heal him. He's like, look at what we got here. <laughs> so, Jane, so six years. Give her, give her a mic. She'll tell the story better than me. So now she's saying it's six years. So she didn't just get up when I laid my hands on her and go, woo, woo. She looked as sick as she did when I laid my hands on her. In fact, I left the hospital rebuking thoughts in my mind. I'm like, oh my God. Because the devil comes, you're, you still got your mind. Raise your hand if you still got your mind. Yep. So your mind, the Bible said that you're, you have the mind of Christ, but he said this. He said that, that your, your mind is the enmity. It's an enemy of God. So the greatest fight to faith you'll ever fight is the fight you keep from fighting in your head. Not going to make it. Not going to make it. You're going to die. You're going to die early. The COVID's going to get you. And you got you to get so much word in you like, I think the COVID's going to get me about as much as the boogeyman's going to get me. Tonight I'm like, Nicole, is the boogeyman's under the bed? Can you check? Is he if the boogeyman's under the bed? <laughs> That's how non-impressed I am. And I realize, I want everyone to understand. I'm not saying COVID's not real. It is real. And it is highly infectious. But there's all kinds of diseases that I have come in contact in my lifetime. And there's been fathers in our faith, Smith Wigglesworth, and they put the bubonic plague when everybody's dying on it. And they came and put it on his hand. And the scientists and everybody was there and it died when they put it on his hand. That means that you can say, no plague is touching me, is going to be on an assignment to kill me. And I realize they're going to classify me as a quack. And a nut job like chiropractors aren't real doctors. <laughs> but all I got to say, six years later, it wasn't me. It's the word that was in her heart. And then we mixed our faith with her faith. I didn't make her whole. Her faith in Jesus, her knowledge of the word made her whole. Come on, somebody ought to give God. Come on, Florida. Grant. Hey, Grant, you and your sister come up here. You can be seated. We're just going to get the whole family in there. So now, your daughter just had her birthday this week. So how old is she now? She, she's 12. So I'm not a math major, but I'm pretty sure she was six. Right? She been, she's been healed six years, and she's 12. So now, when I'm praying for her, she's at the hospital, and the devil's telling her, never going to see her turn 12. You're never going to see that baby walk down the aisle. She told me some of these things. What'd she have to do? She had to take those images that the devil, who is the dirtiest, low down, he's just a creep, man. I'm talking a pedophilia maniac, a, a sex trafficking pervert, a, a demented master. Oh, I don't care, you're getting pretty bold with the devil. I'm in no shape to be fighting the devil. Well, neither am I in my own words, but I'm not in my own words. I am in the blood. He can't take you out. If the devil could kill you, you'd already be dead. God, it's not a wrestling mess. Like, we're going to see who wins the, this election in heaven. No, God's been God. He was God. He's going to be God tomorrow. And we're kingdom people. See, even Pete's got his mask on, clapping in his yellow shirt. I love Pete and Trudy in Florida. So look at this fine looking family. So just tell us for a minute in your own way, uh, like what you had, what, what happened, and try to clean up what I just did. <laughs> well, basically for two years, I uh, saw about 15 different doctors with about five different stories of what was going on with me. I uh, basically, about every three months, had to get a blood transfusion because I was losing so much blood. Um, just uncontrollably, couldn't really be 20 minutes away from Scott because if I would start bleeding, I could bleed out. In fact, did in his arms the last time at the two year mark, which was six years ago, and finally got connected with the right doctor and knew that we were at the right place. And I was finally stubborn uh, 
got rid of my stubbornness of wanting to do it my way and gave it to God and trusted him and believed that he would heal me of any side effects that I was afraid of. And he has, and I am completely healed, completely whole, and give God all the glory. And I'm thankful that I got rid of my pride because I really, I can't wait to ask God someday. I'm not in any hurry to ask him, but whenever that time is, um, I'm, I'll be anxious to see if, if my pride is what made it take two years or if it just was the, the two years was the healing process. I don't know. I'm just kind of curious, Could but be. either way, it's good. So I bet you're going to get up good. there and you're going to forget about it and go, oh, I got so many other questions. That I, got. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but God bless him there. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I just want to add something because you, you've talked about doctors i love the analogy you just gave her hey, if the doctor tells you you have to do x right you do it but mm -hmm. you know if the bible tells you and so when we went to the hospital when she bled out right they took her into kind of an emergency surgery and then i was in the waiting room and the doctor came out and told me you know it was that movie scene right you know i'm the only guy in there and he's like hey i'm sorry there's nothing we can do like you should get your affairs in order and i was the only guy in there and i immediately went in the bathroom, I, I was crying, back to my eyes were sweating, former Army <laughs> Ranger, right? And I'm like, I'm like, man, I, I just, I don't receive that. You know, I do not receive that, right? So the, the doctor said that, right? That, that's what the doctor said, but what you said when you came to see us was speaking life, right? It was what the word said. You're like, man, you're healed in the name of Jesus, Isaiah 53, 5, 1 Peter 2, 24. And so what the, the report we got from you, which was you regurgitating the word to us, was 180 from what the doc, the doctor, well, if I believe the doctor, she wouldn't be standing here on stage right now. We believe the word and she's standing here. Really good. That's so good. You know, um, so let's talk about that in a minute. So it was factual what the doctor said, Absolutely. completely factual. Yeah. And they gotta look out for lawsuits and everything else. So I understand why they do what they do. And it is factual, it is a fact she was gonna die. But truth supersedes fact. So Jesus said he is the spirit of truth. Jesus said this, he said, the truth will set you free. So he went in the bathroom, he, he heard from a doctor then he went in the bathroom alone with the great physician. And so it was factual what was true in her body. But he said, facts supersede. Truth is going to overcome the facts. But it, it doesn't happen. We're almost done. It doesn't happen uh, just by, well, I'll go to church when I can. I'll fit it in when I can. You're never gonna graduate high school going when you can. You're never gonna graduate college going when you can. And you're never going to lose weight and get in shape doing what I'm doing currently. <laughs> During COVID, I fell off the wagon and I can't seem to find the wagon. And it's Pete and Trudy's fault. And then that other girl in the front row who cooks the nacho cheese in Florida. I didn't tell Don about that. You got to be careful. Just stuff starts coming out. So as we start putting a bow on all this for you, she's so healthy. There's no doubt when she gets married in 27 years, when she gets married, they're going to walk down probably Welder Spring Campus because they helped build it. And they're going to walk down the aisle where they grew up. And Grant's going to be there. And everybody's going to be there. And I'm going to be there. And she's going to sit there. And then someday, like, like me and Nicole, she's going to have grandbabies. And she's going to see her children's children. But the devil tried to kill her so she couldn't be up here telling you who might be going through it at home. Think, I'm going to die. COVID's going to kill me because fear will keep you back. I'm almost done. You can go sit down. Thank you. You guys are beautiful. I love you. Unbelievable. So as I, as I wrap this up, I, I want to uh, tell you this. I'm a pilot, and uh, the law of gravity is real. I believe in the law of I heard about a pilot that was up in the air and he made an announcement that they had lost one of their engines and two blondes were in the back of the plane. And the one blonde looked at the other one and said, he said, we've lost one engine. 
We're safe though, we're gonna get there. It's just gonna take us two hours longer. <laughs> he said, okay. And then a few minutes later, he got on and said, uh, bad news, I know you just heard that big pop. We just lost our second engine. And the other blonde looked and said, we're gonna be up here all night. <laughs> Some of you, it takes you a while. They have no engine. <laughs> Some lady just patted a blonde lady. <laughs> that lady's like, I'm not really blonde. <laughs> so I believe in gravity. I believe it. It works. But I, I had to learn about the Bernoulli principle in flight school that lift and thrust overcome the law of gravity. And it's a scary thing when I, Arden's not here tonight, probably, probably rarely he's here, but there's a, there's a runway in, in St. Clair, Missouri. And it's about, it's like landing on an aircraft carrier. And it's really scary flying out of there because it's, it's bumpy, it's short, it's nasty, and there's huge trees at the end of it. And in different days flying, you have to adjust the way you fly. And Trudy knows this in Florida because she's a commercial pilot and turns around a point in the whole deal. Several pilots are in Florida tonight. You have to adjust. A standard air temperature is 29.92 every day. But there's very rarely when it's ever a standard day, you always have to adjust everything in that airplane for non-standard temperatures. And that says everything about the way the plane flies, the way it lifts, the altitude where you're at, the altitude where you're landing. So everything, it might say you're at a thousand feet and you're on the ground. Well, that was the altitude in which you're at right now. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. But I remember many times in that plane, looking at the end of that runway, my dad's in the plane, Nicole's in the plane, the whole family's in the plane, and it's loaded to the gills, and I'm looking at those trees, and we're eating runway. Wah, 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 wah. And I'm looking at that going, my God, I hope this works. <laughs> and then at some point, you wah, lift off at the current speed in which you're supposed to do it, V speed, and then you reach down and you flip up three in the green to try to get those wheels up so they don't drag. And then also it's causing less drag. And then all of a sudden you clear those trees and then all of a sudden in your head you hear, I believe I can fly. <laughs> Come on somebody, I believe I can touch this guy. And then you don't look back at everybody and go, guys, I was scared out of my mind. <laughs> We were loaded, it was hot. It's a lot easier to take off on a cold day because the density of the air, it's really hard on a hot day. So all, you gotta do all that. You can't just get in an airplane and go, it just goes. No, it doesn't just go. People all the time, small aircraft kill people. No, people kill small aircraft. There's not one, one plane went out and killed itself tonight. People mess up what the manufacturer of Piper have designed. So you were fearfully knitted together in the womb from God. And he made you and he manufactured you. But if you don't know the rule book, the operating manual of who you are and what belongs to you, then you just get to thinking, well, I sure hope Dr. Fachi and Dr. Chachi and Dr. Wachi Wachi, they can come up with some kind of plan to give me a shot to try to protect me. And I don't want to be protected by a government. I don't want the government looking out for me. I want the kingdom looking out for me. I want the king looking out for me. I believe that he, come on somebody, he has raised me, filled me, and he has superseded us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. all that yelling about 
we got clearance to take off. Yeah. Control tower said, Saratoga 651 Echo Delta, you're clear for takeoff. And you went, Whoa! and that's why you started feeling like the Holy Spirit in you, all your cylinders started going, bum, 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 bum. And I don't care what the world does. Take the vaccine, don't take the vaccine. Uh, dude, I, I'm not here to guide your life. I'm here to provide you the word that'll give you hope in a dark time. I also, as we're closing up, don't espouse to, it's not what the Lord's telling me, to get ready for dark times in America. Get ready for a dark, dark winter. My light's on, baby. It's not even, I don't even have a dimmer switch. I'm believing that in 2021, we'll look back at the end of 2021 and say, we W-O-N. Somebody ought to help her. You might not, but I'm going to, I'm going to win. Uh, we're winners. We're full of grace. Favor. Bless you. you can have it all you want. Don't want it. It's not yours. I have a question for you here. How many of y'all glad you came tonight? Raise your hand. Let me feel your faith kind of stirring a little bit. The enemy will try to keep you out of these sessions. God told me to start preaching on healing. Why are you preaching on healing? Not because I need preaching on healing. I'm healed, healthy, whole. Um, I'm preaching on it for you. Same reason I preach on money. I don't need money. I was rich a long time ago. Um, I preach on it for you. So I want you to come to class so you eventually graduate. Because you're never gonna graduate if you don't go. Some people online, they use the excuse, some of them. I realize some people have fear and so on, and that's fine. I'm not saying that God can't heal you. But if you are at home, participate as if you're in a church service. Don't be like, well, I'm gonna pay my bills and I'm gonna kind of make popcorn. No, no, no. If you want to get the full benefit of a service, you've got to get into it. And there's nothing better than being actually in a corporate environment. It's what happened in Acts 2. There were one mile and one place. And for the record, the church will be back. The chickens will be back. Chickens are coming back to roost. They'll be back at Easter. When they stop here in 24 hours a day, it's gonna get you. The boogeyman's gonna get you. The boogeyman's gonna get you. They'll be back. And we're gonna love them. The Porter Code's gonna serve them, and the ushers are gonna serve them, and we're gonna be nice to them. And then over the years, because in a couple, of, maybe a year from now, two years from now, maybe, maybe perhaps four. <laughs> perhaps an election virus will come four years from now, or a killer hornet will come four years from now. I'm just predicting four years from now, in our five years of grace and favor, perhaps in that time, there will be some kind of other weird wanky manky that comes to you, and they'll get on there 24 hours a day saying, the wanky manky's gonna get you. And the wanky manky was made over here in this part of the country, and there was actually you know, these bees, that the killer hornets that came from wanky mankyville and they came here and they released them, and it was some kind of sabotage thing, and you need to line up because wanky manky, everybody gotta stay home because, and you gotta go out there and say, man, look at all the wanky mankies flying everywhere. Wanky well, Mickey's going all over my head and everywhere. But this reminds me of the people of God who they said there were lice on this side and Wanky Mickey over here, but no hanky panky. Come on, somebody on me over here on this side. We said, I walk right through it because God did this.